What's going on YouTube? This is your boy Joe Fontaine of Joe Fontaine Music and we're back with another one. I just had a uh, subscriber hit me up and they were wanting to know how to use the controller editor program from Machine along with Ableton Live to trigger the impulse rack as well as the drum rack. So, no problem. I'll go ahead and we'll get into that and I'll show you how you can do that. Okay, so the first thing you guys need to do is you need to go to your machine resource folder so if you follow what I have highlighted up here it shouldn't be no problem you go to your program file 86 file you go on your Ableton Live file you find a Live 8 folder you get look under resources okay you see right here where it says MIDI remote scripts this is where you're going to be bringing the machine editor folder so let me go ahead and show you that right quick okay now if you notice right here you gotta go into the program files okay native instruments the controller editor file then you're gonna see the template support files able to live 8 you're gonna see the machine controller file so again you take that file and you drag it inside of the Ableton Live MIDI remote scripts file uh, folder now once you do that I'm going to get to this in, in one one second here. Under your preference tab, under control surface, uh, you're going to have to have it highlighted as machine controller. You'll notice all of these will be inside of that same folder. So what basically what we're doing is we want Ableton Live to recognize the machine controller program, and there it is right there. Very important. You have to have that in there. Okay, and I don't have my Axiom set up, so I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, from there you're pretty much ready to rock. You just jump down to your MIDI ports here. Make sure that you do have the machine controller uh, remote on as well as the, the track on. And from there, Ableton Live now recognizes the machine hardware as a controller surface. Okay, it's easy as that. Now, what was given a friend of mine... Uh, some headaches I guess you can say was he was saying hey Joel Fontaine every time I hit on my pads they're not triggering the sounds and for the life of me I couldn't figure out like why they weren't triggering off for him so what I came up with was this quick little tutorial to show it to him right quick okay for example the Ableton Live template by default uh, the A and B they have it set up for clips like you can drag and, and drop your audio clips I'll show you, I'll show you that in a minute I mean, you can route it on here, and I, I, you know, I can show you that. But I think it'd just be a waste of time because with the with the drag and drop feature, it's a lot easier and it saves you a lot of headaches. So, I, I, you know, you can create a new template here, and you can just completely map out everything using this MIDI icon here. When you highlight this MIDI icon here, your screen will change a different color. And let's say, like for the pages, okay, like right here, this is page one, saying. Uh, recording one through eight all that means is like let's pretend this is the machine controller actually on on your screen it's gonna have the template name right here okay if you hit this button it says record one on your first audio track it's gonna highlight the record enable right here okay then these icons here they're gonna be lit up so when you tap on you know your left or right button it's gonna scroll through the pages like for example solo you hit that it's gonna make this little solo button right here come on off, you know, and so on and so on. When you get to your, you know, you get down to your send and stuff like that. But anyway, let's go ahead and get in. Let's get into uh, actually having uh, the pads correspond with the notes. What you need to do, okay? Where where's my impulse rack? Okay, here's my impulse rack right here. Here are the drum sounds. Okay, so we need these pads. There's only eight pads on here. So of course the controller editor, the controller editor program has 16 pads. So of course the last eight pads are going to be obsolete in this particular situation with the drum rack. Of course you're going to have to go through different banks and find those notes. So I would definitely suggest once you 
get your controller uh, editor template set up, make sure you save that because you're going to have a, a major headache going back and doing it every time. So I have one um, label right here which is saying drill fontaine trigger and as I mentioned previously you can see here the last eight pads are actually, I put question marks over them because I really don't know what else to put on them because this is live light eight I'm using and there's only eight pads on here. Now of course I can open up another let's say a MIDI track for example and have a, another instance of impulse running and route these remaining eight pads to another uh, you know impulse rack and you know but I would have to sit there I would you know go and I would have to uh, hit the arm button on those but for time saving factors you can do that okay so the zone range okay imagine this as you're on your like your MIDI controller when you're setting your zone your zone range for like a, a general MIDI or MIDI learn program you want the zone range to, to basically be from C3 to C4 <clears throat> but it works a little bit different the controller editor because pad C3 that's that's this this first drum pad right here I don't have my my, my machine controller set up right now or I would tap on the pad and show you what I'm talking about but this on the impulse rack this first pad assign that to C3 it will trigger this drum pad off I promise you that trust me on this the next pad here you assign this one to D3 okay so this is C3 then this is D3 okay and it goes up E3 is the third one F3 for the fourth one G3 for the fifth one you might want to write this down if you don't know it offhand A3 you know and so on and so on to B3 and finally C4 will be the last note on that trust me on that because when I, I know when I first was doing it it was giving me a headache because I couldn't figure it out I was like yo why is it not it wasn't going like the normal zone range or whatever okay so pad velocity curve curve I have my set is linear, linear the MIDI uh, port I had it as an internal port uh, inside of my Ableton Live program so the easy way to do that okay so you click on this assign pad right here um, your velocity is going to say zero right there, you know, because some people want, you know, you want to, you know, the harder you hit the pad, the louder it gets. I just have my velocity. This is basically, you ever be inside a machine and then, you know, you hit pad mode and you hit this, this guy over here and it has a fixed velocity button right here. That's basically what I'm doing, you know, just manually doing what that shortcut would do. I have the minimum at 127 and the max 127. So no matter how light or how hard I hit the pad, it's going to be the loudest uh, sound possible. Okay, so right here we have pad one, and what you want to do is you want to set the note. You just tap on this and highlight it like so, and just type it in. See, you guys are getting a major shortcut by me giving this vid because the work's done. You know exactly what to put. Now, anything after that, you know, you have to when it makes this little icon like this let me show you right quick like that see how those those notes are going up and down okay so those notes is where you're gonna find um, the notes that you need to correspond with your your pads so when you move it here it's not gonna change automatically down here so if Native Instruments is watching uh, I would like to see that in a future update when we are on the assigned pad here when I'm adjusting my notes here and uh, showing the pad here, for example, saying pad one. I, w I would like to see you guys, you know, when we move that automatically, or, you know, adjust our pads. Come on, come on. <laughs> so um, that's pretty much how that works, and it's pretty much cut and dry as that. Uh, that should make it pretty easy for you. I have mine set to channel two. You know, you can set your 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 parameters for for different channels. You know, on different systems such as Region or Pro Tools or whatever. Um, I actually I haven't tried routing this with with anything else other than uh, Ableton Live right now because you know, being that I can open up Machine as a VST inside Pro Tools, I really don't bother with this because I just do the the workflow inside of like Pro Tools. <clears throat> so for whatever reason people want fuller control so let's get to the fuller control uh, whereas with <clears throat> machine open uh, as a VST you wouldn't be able to uh, get that control so on Ableton Live this button here 
when I click that, how this lights up, you see my mappings here. This is just some, some quick mappings I did just to give you an idea. Again, I don't have the machine controller uh, on right now. I should have done that. But you guys can just, when you touch anything, like for example, if you touch the play button here, see how this little 8 lit up? And then if you touch the record button, the little, these like little numbers are going to pop up. These are the mappings. Okay, if you if you hit the loop button, like my on my machine controller it says loop. I know on some people it says restart. You touch that loop button and that will light up, and so on and so on. If you turn the knob, it's gonna adjust the knobs. You know, if you're down here in the impulse rack, and you know it's gonna adjust the transpose or the stretch, the drive, the frequency, the decay. So once you're done with it, you just turn, you just click this button again, and it locks in. Okay, now getting back. Oh dang, I, I closed that out. When you get everything set the way you need it, when I had that controller editor program up, make sure, and I cannot stress this enough, that you save that program. Because I'm telling you, it will get you every time. You will come back, like like you'll like you'll you'll have everything set. And then like let's say if you're ending your session and you close your session out, just because you save it here in live is not gonna save what you did on this controller editor program. It's not going to save it, so trust me. <laughs> trust me on that. So, um, I hope that makes it a lot clearer. And again, uh, I know there's people for whatever reason you you might want to, you know, I have mine set as V16. Normally, this right here would just say machine, like this here. You know, okay, this is machine, and you see right here, I just have the saying, like, say I'm routing this kick, okay, or or the snares or whatever whatever that I have on here, you know. You can drag and drop it, or you can stream the audio. Okay, don't pay attention to this down here. I'm just, I'm just clicking on this. I know this is like the, the sequencer up here, but I'm just saying you can, you can either drag and drop the audio, or you can stream it. I would say go ahead and just, you know, man, just drag and drop the audio. Just, just you know, just use this icon here, because that's what it's for. For whatever reason, I know I, you know, I can hit the sample button, and I know I can run a mic through it. You know, some people, you know, I know you might want to record your lyrics inside a machine. I know, I know a way that you can do that. I do that sometimes, um, and then convert it back to mono, which sometimes uh, a lot of engineers put it. Excuse me, put it as that anyway. What you would need to do, let me open these up so you guys can see it. On this screen here, this is going to be saying machine, so don't let this confu confuse you. I use the MIDI from all channels, so whatever I'm using, whether it's internal or external. I know for a fact that I'm getting all the MIDI notes I'm on the outs. I'm doing the same thing. I'm sending it out to all MIDI channels, so I know that the data is going out to whether internal or external doesn't doesn't make a difference. Now, on the out channel here, okay, what you need to do is um, it's not going to show up here right now because I have my mic on, but there's going to be a little button right here where you can highlight to actually turn it on. When, you, when when you're on this channel right here, where it says audio from, when you click on this, see it's saying V16N. That's basically it's a pipeline. It's busting it in from here. So that's gonna say machine on yours. Okay, it's gonna say machine there, and it's gonna say machine here. I just labeled mine different, you know. But don't let that confusion on this vid. Again, pretend it's the same machine, and it's gonna say machine right then on yours. You hit the the arm key right here. And your audio is gonna come, your audio is gonna come out just like that. So that that's pretty much it. This is your boy Joe Fontaine of Joe Fontaine Music. So get at me on my webpage, which is www.digitalmusic.yolasite.com. If you guys have any questions or concerns, hit me up, digitalmusic at gmail.com. I appreciate the love and the support. Thumbs up if you love the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.